Hello everyone, thank you for joining. This is Disrupt the 7, a channel dedicated to all things craps, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or an advanced player, all are welcome. I am 7 Out Jade, the creator of this channel, and today is the first detailed video I'm putting up in 2021. We'll be taking a look at one of my favorite strategies that I use a lot when I'm at casinos. It has different variations to it, but I'll be focusing only in the basic framework. This video assumes that you already know the basics, that you've played craps for a while, and are looking to explore something different. I may do more beginner videos in the future if there's demand for it, but for now, this is what I call the hit and run. to the segment, The Breakdown, where I take a moment to break down the strategy in play, the hit and run. In short, this strategy turns on and off your bets while avoiding the 7. Sounds simple, right? We assume the basics. We're at a 345 maximum odds, $5 minimum table. We don't bet anything in the come out roll, no pass line bets, no don't pass line bets. Just let the shooter get that point. Let's say the shooter rolled a 9. We'll tell the dealer, $27 across. That means $5 on the 4, 5, 10, and $6 on the 6 and 8. We're only doing the minimum since the table is $5. In another video, I'll do another scenario using $10 or maybe even $15, but for now, we'll only stick to $5. If the shooter had rolled a different number, let's say he rolled an 8, we'll tell the dealer $26 across. We want to have a unit working on each number except on the come out number. The idea of the hit and run is to have a bet on the main numbers to maximize the profit. Then you immediately collect, but not press. We do that for two additional rolls regardless of the outcome. After the third roll, we'll tell the dealer to turn off our bets. For example, the come out roll with a hard 8. We bet 26 across. Then the shooter rolled a 5. Then rolled a 10. And on the third roll, a 4. We tell the dealer bets are off, and the shooter continues his streak by rolling a 6 then a 12, a 5, a 3, and then a 4 on his 8th roll. On the website, The Wizard of Odds, I'll link the address in the description, it says the average number of rolls per shooter is 8.5. That means on the last roll that the shooter throws is always a 7, but the average roll before the 7 out is about 7.53. When we round up, that's a solid 8. So what does that mean? It means on average, we have about eight rolls before a shooter sevens out. Imagine betting and collecting before that seven hits. But of course, that's never the case. At a table, we're surrounded by several different types of players, from beginners to anywhere from professional players. We can tell those that have the higher bankroll are more aggressive players than the ones that are barely hanging on from a thread. In this image, there's the five blue colored players. If we average their shots, it'll probably be in that 8.5 range. The aggressive players could have had 30-some consecutive rolls while the rest could have had bad rolls. So the calculation looks at the average. So it does not guarantee you that each roll will last about eight rolls. It's just the average. Now, going back to our roll, the shooter was on a good roll. Our bets were turned off. And now after the eighth roll, we tell the dealer to have our bets on. The shooter then rolls an 11 then a five, and then a nine. That's three rolls again, and that means we turn off our bets one more time. And that's a good thing too, because the shooter then shoots a seven, seven out. Everyone loses, except for us. We had our bets turned off. We don't lose our place bets. In fact, we profited a total of $39 from the rolls that landed in our favor, and that's not including the $26 across. Simple, no? We don't know when that seven is going to hit. It can happen here on the second roll, the fifth roll or somewhere in the 11th roll. So the idea is to have the bets on and wiggle around those possible threats. We know the average roll before the seven rolls is a 7.5 or eight for us. So we'll use that three on, five off. And that leads to the question, can we do a four on and four off? Or perhaps we can do a five on and three off? Maybe. The more our bets are left on, the more chances the seven leers its ugly head. So enough of this, let's go demonstrate the hit and run using a three on and five off bet. Okay, let's get ready to roll. We're going to use a hit and run three on five off strategy with a small bank roll of $100. I would practice first before increasing the bank. 
The table we're at is a 3, 4, 5 odds and a $5 table minimum. The idea is to demonstrate the basic of the strategy and in future videos I can show a more aggressive approach. But in this demo I'll show you the basic framework. We don't need to place a bet on the pass line or on the don't pass line. We're just waiting for the point to be established by another shooter at the table. Starting in the center, we have the casino bankroll in the black tray. I don't want to confuse anyone with our bankroll, which is the acrylic tray on my left hand side. Our bankroll again starts at $100. I gave the dealer $100 earlier and he gave us back $5 chips and some $1 chips. Nothing fancy there, but we are set and ready to go. But first off, we're going to opt out from shooting and have another person take a crack at it. We want to be able to leave at any time in case something happens, so we're just going to ride the wave. The dealer hands a set of dices to the new shooter. They select two dices, tap the table for luck. The shooter throws, the come out is 5-1, the point is 6. Move the puck to the 6. The stick man moves the dices and everyone is ready to bet. Now from our bankroll we tell the dealer we want $26 across. That's $5 on every number and $6 on the 8. No prop bets, no field bets, no hard ways. We just want to have our bets in position and now we wait. We will have the shooter throw again and 5-5, five five, a hard 10. Let's move these dices out of the way. I'll keep track of the throws. This is the first count of the shooter after the come out roll. The dealer pays us $9. Collect the winnings back into the bank and we don't need to press, just collect. Shooter is ready, collect the dice, shoots, and 6-6, six, six, 12. Nothing happens, but this is the second roll. Shooter will try again, the throw, 3-2, easy 5. We have a unit on the 5, the bank pays us $7. And again, we collect. That is the third roll, in which now we tell the dealer that we want our bets turned off. Shooter takes the dice, the throw. 5-3, easy 8. We have the bet on the 8, but again, bets are off, so nothing happens here. Shooter takes the dice, shooter shoots. 4-4, hard 8, nothing happens. That's the fifth roll. Shooter takes the dice, the throw, 6-4, easy 10, nothing happens, so that's the 6 count, shooter throws, 6-4, easy 10, again nothing happens, that's the 7th roll, shooter tries again, 5-5, five, five, our heart 10, nothing happens to us, 6-4, easy 10, shooter has back to back 10s, at this point, you trust the shooter and you tell the dealer you want our bets turned on. Eight rolls have passed, so we want everything working. Shooter rolls. And a heart six. Shooter gets the point. The puck is now off. A new point needs to be rolled. The same shooter tries his luck again. And the throw. Five, one, six. Come out point is back at six. Pucker back at six. All bets are working, same shooter, the throw, 5-3, easy 8. Dealer pays us $7, collect the chips and back into our bank. Shooter rolls again, and the 7 comes up, 4-3, 7 out. We lose the $26 across, pikers off, a new shooter gets their turn. Now we wait for a new shooter because we don't want to bet on the come out roll, so we're playing it safe. New shooter. Four two eighty six. Point is set at 6. Now we take the $26 from our bank, give it to the dealer, and tell him $26 across.
shooter rolls and 6-1. Shooter couldn't even last one roll and now everyone hates this person. We lose the $26 again. Point is off. We still have enough chips in our bankroll. We're not playing aggressively. We still have time on our side. Another new shooter tries their luck again. Throws it and 639. We'll try again. $27 across. The new shooter throws. 3 1, easy 4. The dealer pays us $9. No pressing. Shooter tries again. Mental count is 1 and the throw. 5 3, easy 8. The dealer pays us $7. Collect and no press. Collect the dice. Counter is on the second roll. One more roll before it's off. Three, two, five. Dealer pays us seven dollars. You collect, no press. We tell the dealer we want the bets off. The shooter throws. Four, three, seven. Seven out. This is good. Our bets were off, so we don't get affected. Everyone else sucks to be them. A new shooter comes around. Four, two. The new point is six. We tell the dealer to move our bet to the nine. One dollar back into our bank. Bets are now working. Shooter tries again. And 6-2, easy 8. The bank pays us $7. Back into our bank. No press. Let the shooter throw. 5-1, 6. Shooter gets a point. Pucker is off. Same shooter tries again. Come out roll is four three seven. Nothing happens. No bets on the pass line. Shooter tries again. Two one three. Nothing happens. No bets were on the pass line. Shooter tries again. Five three easy eight. Tell the dealer to move our bets over. New point is eight. Let the shooter try again. Six, two, eight. They get the point fast and everyone's happy. Same shooter tries for the new point. Shooter throws for the come out point. Five, three, again, eight is the new point. Our bets are back working. Same shooter. 3 1 easy 4. Bank pays us $9. Back into the bank. No press. Our bank is looking a bit messy, but that's fine. Shooter throws. 6 4 easy 10. Bank pays us $9. Back into our bank. No press. Shooter tries again and 415. Collect $7. Our bank is spilling over here. That was three rolls. Our banks are off. Shooter tries again. Five six eleven. Nothing happens. 
six three Niners. Nothing happens. Six five eleven. Nothing happens to us again. Shooter throws. Two one three. Pucker, nope. Nothing there. But you know now, at this point, you tell the dealer, you know what? I've had a decent roll. Take my bets off. I am done. Let me organize these chips. The ones, fives, ones. Five. Make a pile here, here, there. I think I got this. Twenty-five, fifty, seventy-five, ninety-five. That is our original bank. So anything after this is profit. Five, ten, fifteen. Fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, twenty-seven. $27 profited, not bad. We started well and the 7 got us twice, but we bounced back. We could have continued and see where it would have lead us, but we don't want to be greedy. In the next video, I'll show you the hit and run using $10 and see how much of a difference it'll impact. You'll be surprised. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like or leave a comment and tell me what you really think. But until then, I am 7OutJ. Thank you for watching.